Hi. Well, today I'll talk about a really cool little trick I learned for studying. I learned about this from actually a lecturer and tutor of mine who was a neuroscientist. And his speciality was brain networks, so he really understood well the learning process and what you went through when you learned something and then had to recall it later. The process of memory and the process of cognition. And he alerted me while I was studying for my exams to a really important feature of learning and human knowledge that most people completely ignore. But if you can pay attention to it and really, really tweak your learning in this way with this small important step, very easy to do, your results will probably go up about 20%. And it's based on the fact, to begin with, that most people when they're studying, they study in one place. You have your favorite place, so I'm gonna go and sit in my bed, not always the best place to study, or I'm gonna to go to the library. I'm just gonna sit, it's nice and quiet, no distractions, I'm just gonna sit, and I'm just gonna study this section today, and then I go back in three days, and I study the same section again, and I do this right throughout term, and then I get to the exam, and I go, and I go to the exam hall, and well, my job is to recall it of all the stuff that's in my head, all these different courses, all these things I've ever learned. What I want to do is pull out from that specific book out of my memory so it can go out into the, into the paper and I can, I can get the best results for that exam. And there's a big, big problem with that approach that almost everyone does. And it's because even though it looks on the surface as if what is happening in your brain and in your memory is that you're reading it, it goes into your head just as what you're learning on the page and you go into the exam and it's back there and you just pull it straight out. In fact, that's not what happens in the human mind really. There's a very important other factor to consider that most people are ignoring and it's a thing called memory specificity. What does that mean, memory specificity? Well, it means that if you think that when you're studying, it feels like you're looking at the book and what's on this page is going into your head and it gets locked away in a little block. This section is called refugees. So it goes into a little box called refugees and then I learn that, maybe I revise it, and I walk into the exam and there's a question about refugees and I just go into that box and it's just information on refugees in there. And in fact, that's not what happens at all. And of course, it's actually ridiculous when you think about it to imagine that that might be how the brain works. Because books are quite a new thing. The human mind, as humans, and before that, when we were other smaller mammals and uh, other apes after that, our brain's been evolving that whole time. Books were never even there during that time. Yeah. And reading and remembering was never there like that. So we say, what was the human mind? and memory for. It was for what we did. It was for survival and for hunting and for gathering and for social interaction. And one of the most important things when we were learning in those environments was the environment itself. It wasn't just what we were looking at. It wasn't that, oh, that's a big wildebeest or that's a big tiger come to attack me or that's where the best plants are for eating or that's where the best animals are for hunting. So our memory was really, 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 really closely tied to the place where that was happening. It's not just what the animal was. We know that tigers are going to be attacking us, and we know that berries are going to be good to eat, but food is scarce, it's hard to find. So the most important thing by far is that we know where we got it last time. We've got a huge savanna, how are we going to remember? It's because what happens in our head then? This is what a memory does, is that it ties what's going on, what we're trying to remember, with the place that it happened. Oh, I know. If I go back there, to the bottom of the savannah, just to the left by the trees, when I go back there, I suddenly have this big recollection, and that's where I remember, that's where I get attacked by tigers. That's a very powerful force in our mind, because then we know, uh -uh, I go there, I'm gonna run back. And if you can build that into our mind, you're going to be much safer and it's going to be much easier for you to find where the berries are next year because 
all those environmental cues, the smell, the sounds, what it looked like there, where the berries are, they're all logged with the memory of the berries. And that's what specificity is, is that you're not just remembering berries, not much good, you're remembering the environment. It's specific to that environment. Now, how does that affect me in my study now? Because I've still got the same brain. When you're born, your mind thinks it's thousands of years ago. It doesn't know that you're living in this environment with books and stuff. You just learn that when you're growing up. It's an unnatural environment for you. You can cope with it, but it's unnatural. And in fact, we don't really try and cope with it properly because when we study, all we study is the bit, I'm just going to read about calendars. Calendars, calendars, calendars. I read it again and again, and then I know in two months, someone's going to examine me on it. And they'll say, explain to me calendars. And I'll go, okay. And what that okay requires is for me to dig in deep into my brain and try and go, oh yeah, I remember about calendars. It's about months of the year and it's about the history of calendars. Well, yeah, you can kind of cope with that, but it'd be much, much better if you paid attention to specificity, the environment. And this was all explained to me once by one of the top neuroscientists in the world. And he worked with brain networks, monkeys' brains, human brains, the networks, he would model in the computers. And he said, this is extremely important if you're studying. Because when you study, you don't just read what's in the book. It feels like that. I'm just gonna read about work. Work, work, it's here on the page and it's getting to my head. No, 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 that's not really what's happening. It feels like that. But when you're reading it, your subconscious mind is processing everything around you. And your subconscious mind knows what to do. We're in the library. I know the smell of the library. I know the sounds in the background. The photocopier machine, people walking in and out. And it's tying this bond, close bond between reading about work in the book, studying that information, and the environment you're in. Well, what's the big deal? You'll be able to pull it out in the exam. Well, no, it's much harder if you've only studied in the library because you go into the library today and then you read about work and then you go into the library next week and you read about work. You, you're, 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 not, you're not going home and reading about work. You're not going to the kitchen or your car to read about work. Work is the memory that we learn when we're in the library. And then five months later, you read it again and again and again. Where do you have to pull it out? Where do you have to pull it out from your memory? In the library? No, not in the library. In the exam hall. Oh, your mind's thinking, all right, I can remember some of it, but to be honest, I learned that stuff for the library. Because it doesn't know you're studying for an exam. It still thinks you're in the savannah. It's tying the links. It doesn't want to remind you about dangerous tigers when you're sitting in your little tent. Tigers are for the savannah. And it's the same with the studying about work. Work was the thing that we were learning about in the library. You get to the exam hall and your brain's going, where am I? Or I'll try and find something, but I can't promise anything. So ideally, the best place to study really would have been in the exam hall, but we can't do that. Most of us can't, because it would be great. You go straight into the exam hall and your brain would go, I know what we know for here, we are work. This is where we've studied something about work. So. A good way to break that up is to study in lots of different places. Because if you read about work in your car, in the library, and in your bedroom, when you do get into the exam, it's not going to be that worried about the environment because it knows that work is something that comes up in all these different environments. It's a bit like your memory of your friend Bob. Okay, the first time you met Bob, you were down and you were fighting the tiger. And if you went back and you only saw Bob and you were fighting the tiger, yeah. Your brain would go, Bob, tiger, stay away from Bob, there's something dangerous about Bob. But and that's not what happens. You go to the Neanderthal pub with Bob and you go uh, and you go to his tent to eat with him. So it knows that um, there's no real link between the tiger and Bob because you've been in all these different environments with Bob. So you know things about Bob, but the, the links have been broken up. So Bob is related to everywhere. It's a bit like just the same if you study in all these different places. Because your brain then knows, now we just need to know this stuff about work, but it doesn't really matter what the environment is. But there is a little tweak. If you remember, when we talk about 
memory specificity and the link between something we know and the environment. If you think about your life, you'll remember that there's actually a really strong link between one type of sensory cue and memory. And do you know what it is? I've got it here. Can you smell that? No. It's a strong smell. And even though there are other cues for memory, like vision, you know, oh, I saw this film. Yeah, there, I remember. Yeah. I think I went there in 1968 with my granddad. But it's not a powerful cue, is it? It's like a vague idea. But, but you could have smelled something 20 years ago and you smell it again and boom, you're translocated straight back to that environment. Because smell is an extremely important, powerful cue. Because smell was in these environments, you'd be deep in the pine woods and that's where you were attacked by this big, big tiger. And you'd associate the smell of the pine. In fact, if the attack was bad enough, you couldn't go back to that smell of the pine because it links so closely with the memory of that attack. So how can we exploit that to our advantage? Well, this is what my neuroscientist professor told me to do. He said, when you're studying, every time you're studying, you're getting smelled up. Smell, 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 smell. Something very specific you don't use anywhere else. You don't use anywhere else at all. Just when I'm studying, I'm just going to use Azuro Puron. And now I know there's going to be a link between Azuro Puron and work. And this bit that I'm studying, in fact, maybe everything I'm studying, maybe I'm studying for five or six different things. You see me? Five or six different things. I'm studying physics, chemistry, biology, and maths. Every time I'm studying these, I smell. I go about my daily life, no smell. I'm taking a shower, the smell's gone. I'm going to have my dinner go to a movie with my friends. No smell. There's no association. And you guess what we're going to do? Yeah. We're going to use it when we go into the exam. So we're just getting ready to walk into the exam hall. What do we do? Yeah. Smell. 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 It's really strong. And your brain's going to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what this smell means. It means physics, chemistry, maths, biology. Yeah. Let's get those memories back because it's as if you are back in that pine forest and needs to bring back all those strong, powerful memories of whatever it was that was a threat to you there, as a good source of food. And it's gonna bring back those memories really, really strong. So more than ever, you're gonna have really powerful, strong access to all of those pieces of information you knew about physics. And that can even break down the, any problem you've had. Maybe you were studying in the library and only in the library. Well, it knows there's no real link now because you're, you're not in the library anymore, now you're in this exam hall, but it does know that the smell's back. So even though it can't see the same thing, the smell is there, and the smell is more powerful than anything. And your exams, if you're studying, if you're being diligent, your exam results will go up between 20 and 30% just by using this trick. The same smell when you study. Try and study in lots of different environments, but most importantly, the smell trick. Same smell when you're studying. Sniff, sniff, yeah, I know what this is. We're studying physics, and it's the smell. Then you go to the exam, you get ready to get to the exam hall. Three months later, five months later. Yeah, same smell, only for study and the exam hall. And you go into that exam hall, and those memories are gonna come flooding back, they're gonna be primed, and you're gonna be acing that exam better than anyone else there. That's how you get A's and 100%. Good luck. Oh, and remember, if you like this video, please share it, like it, and subscribe. Comment below, tell us what you think, let us know how you got on. All best, cheers.